Hello everyone, and welcome to our Wii U animated loading screen tutorial. I'm Ryan with Classic Retro Gamers. Today we'll go over how to make your own custom animated loading screen, that is, the screen that shows when loading into the home menu. Links for all the tools we'll be using as well as the BPS patches for the files are in the description. I'd like to start out by thanking Parawevo and Christmas Kusa, hopefully I'm not butchering those names, over at Theme Cafe on Discord. With our combined efforts, we managed to create a template to create these animated screens. An invite link to the Discord channel is in the description. Theme Cafe is the place to go for themes, splash screens, music, and tutorials, and lots more for customizing your Wii U. Go ahead and check it out. You'll even see right here there's splash screens for use with aroma, static themes, and even animated themes. There's also tutorials on how to make your own. So if you wanted to become a creator, this is a good place to start. This would be the location of the content that you're looking for. You're going to grab hbm.pack and hbm2-2.pack. That's all you need. Now, hbm.pack can stay the way it is, but hbm2-2 must be patched with this animation. And we can do that with an online ROM patcher, or you can use a program called Beat. It's just anything that will patch a BPS file, and this is the easiest, most convenient one to use. You simply put in your .pack file here, and then your BPS file here, you click Apply Patch, and it'll download the patched version. Just make sure that it's named uh, hbm2-2.pack, remove the part that says patched, before you copy it over to your Wii U. So let's minimize this right now. By the way, this is how we copy things over. We use a program called WinSCP, which FTP connects over to the Wii U system. And on the Wii U system itself, you use FTPU everywhere, or with Aroma, you can use the built-in FTPU plugin and just make sure that you have system fi the option that says, I believe, modify system files as true and you pick FTP as the protocol, leave the port number as 21. You can log in anonymously and just make sure that your IP address matches that of your Wii U system. You click login and just navigate over to where these two files are. You have storage MLC, sys, title, 0005, 0030, 1001, 010A. Content, Common, Package. Okay, so to start out, we're going to work with animations first, and what you're going to need is a program called Switch Toolbox. First we'll work with HBM2-2, which is where the animations happen. The actual boot sound that we want to change is in HBM.pack, and it's literally just one file that you replace and we'll go over that later, a little later on. So we'll expand this, make this bigger, to Common, Layout, and then look for HBM App Change TV, and break this down until you have three folders. Now open a one that says TIMG, and you'll notice that it's kind of a jumbled mess, but you get the gist that there's frame one and frame 2. What we're going to do is replace each of these. And I have some prepared animation frames. So when you get to this point, there's a little image box up here. It says open with default program. Now the default program I have in my system is GIMP. And for the purposes of this video, that's the one I'm using because that's the one that I tested out and know that works. So we click that box up here, click OK, now when it opens you want to make sure that both of these are checked, and then hit OK. And you simply just drag and drop the frames in. Although this image is larger, whether it's larger or smaller, you have to make sure that it goes to the same size as the image in the pack file. So for this one, it's 1280 by 720. So you want to rescale the layer 
to match. Some people might think that it'll just chop off the edges, but for some strange reason, it does a weird thing where it just makes it a, a cobbled up mess when you go to save it. So now that that's rescaled, we'll go ahead and overwrite. And this box will pop up that'll ask you if you want to apply the edits, you say yes. And when you come back down to Switch Toolbox, you'll notice that it's changed. Now you want to do this for all 15 frames, which can be incredibly tedious, but unfortunately that's how it has to go. Okay, now I'm at frame 15, the last frame. Let's go ahead and get this one in here. that. Now go ahead and do a quick save. I've had this program crash a couple of times. I like to save before I move on to anything. We can collapse the TIMG box and now go to the BLYT box and double click the BFLYT file. And use the mouse to scroll out. And now here's all our frames going from bottom up to frame one, two, three. You can even see over here all our frames. Now if you want to test this out, we can bring up the game window. Make that a little bigger. And highlight all of them. I like to move this to 120 frames per second because it looks more like it does on the Wii U system, in my opinion anyway. Just hit play. So that's how your animation will look on the system. We can go ahead and close this out. Now there's one more spot. We have HBM App Change DRC, which is where you'd have the same screen but on the gamepad. They have a different area for it. Now we haven't figured out how to animate this one yet, but we can put at least a still image on it. So for this one you'd see, I kind of made a little Breath of the Wild screen here, but we'll go ahead and change this one. Let's see what we got. Ooh, how about this? And since the resolution actually matches, we can just go ahead and overwrite. Okay, let's go ahead and close that out. And there it is, replaced. So we'll go ahead and do one more save. Okay, and we are done with this file. So, the next file we're going to work on is the hbm.pack, and what we're going to do first is wave to boot sound. Now I've already got one in here, but let's go ahead and kind of work from scratch. Or rather, this is the sound... My mistake, this is the sound that is going to be playing that I chose anyway. I'm sure a lot of a lot of you will recognize it from the game uh, Legend of Zelda a Link to the Past, which is actually my favorite in the series, right next to Wind Waker. So what I did was I used Audacity to trim down the file. So we just go ahead and drag and drop our file in. Now, I've had success with some around 18 seconds, but 
the sweet spot seems to be around 14. I would do like a little less than 14. So we'll go ahead and chop like the middle off right here in between those two. Or in that period of silence. And just remove it. And go ahead and test it out. Now, about around here, or whenever the home menu is actually loading, or about to load in, you'll, you'll hear a fade out anyway, so it'll either just stop at the end of this if it's taken longer than it should to load, which it shouldn't, <laughs> but it'll typically fade out, I know in my system, around like four or five seconds in, but you don't want it to be any longer than 14 seconds. So let's go ahead and export audio. And make sure you select 48,000 hertz or 48 kilohertz. Sign 16-bit PCM. Definitely make sure it's going to the right folder. But what you want to do is name this lowercase boot and then uppercase sound dot wave. So it's camel cased. And we can just export. Yep, we're, relate, we're replacing the one that's in there. So we can go ahead and listen to it. Okay, so... We're going to want to use Wave to Boot Sound. And this would be the command you want to run. I just put a pause at the end so I can see if it gave any errors. But this is how I format my batch file for it. And go ahead and run it. It's very quick. And here's our file that we're going to use to replace in the hbm.pack. Now we'll go ahead and reopen Switch Toolbox, which I didn't have to close it, I guess. And we'll expand this down, go to Common, Sound, HBM, and then find bootsound.btsnd, right-click it, replace raw data, and we'll pick our newly formed boot sound file. Okay, with that in there, it's just a quick save. Literally a quick save. And we can close this out. And now we can go ahead and copy these two files over to the system. Be prepared to wait, this might take a while. Okay, close to the end. Too bad there's not a fast forward in real life. Alright, with that done, we can go ahead and close this window. And now that we're done here, we can head over to the Wii U and check it out over there. Okay, so here we are at the Wii U. Let me plug this. Home button out of here and home button out of here. So I'm using a dual boot aroma and tiramisu. I like to use tiramisu because it's a quick in and out of the um, homebrew channel. Honestly, I suggest when it comes to these two files, because they don't always take effect right away, I like to reboot. So let's go ahead and power down. start back up. System's also diffused. I wanted to make sure that when I work on these I have every possible unbricking method, I guess. So I have this and Udpi.
And there was our custom loading screen. So, say we were to open a game and back back out. We should see it when we come back into the home menu. That about does it for this video, but remember if you don't know how to unbrick your console, don't try this. This could very well end up in a brick that you cannot fix if you don't know how. And I'd like to again thank uh, Parawevo and Christmas Kusa for all they've done for this. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to uh, hit that like button and subscribe, and here at Classic Retro Gamers, you can check out our website at ClassicRetroGamers.com where we also offer customization options for just about every game system you can find. We also build custom gaming PCs. Well, thank you for watching, and until next time, have a good one.